Hey everyone, let's waste no time. Let's see, uh, let's see how Gartholomew, which sounds like Bartholomew, but he's probably a Garth Brooks fan. At least that's the only Garth that comes to my. Uh, wait, no, we also have Garth from Wayne and Garth. That's that's the real Garth that comes to my head. All right, we're gonna play e5. Let's see what kind of uh, instruction we can get. A king's gambit. That's always fun, real fun. And uh, I play this line with d5 in the King's Gambit as, as normally the most principled thing you can do in a uh, an open romantic style game. These uh, old school Gambit type openings is to open the center as quickly as your opponent is going to get to open the center. And so in this way, I'm, I'm able to develop and get full compensation for... Um, for the time that normally your opponent gains when when they sacrifice some some material to get a lead development, so you you try to counteract that by not necessarily sacrificing back, but at least striving to get d5. D5 is sort of this universal breakthrough, and uh, we'll back up and take a quick look and and remind or explain to Gartholomew where where he could have played differently because right now this is headed toward a uh, an ouch town population. Uh, Gartholomew headed headed the direction that uh, Garth Brooks's country music career did, which is of course down, and you know, ever since the dance, right? Ever since the dance, it's like he couldn't he couldn't have a hit any bigger than that. I know what you're thinking. Is there any pop culture that this guy doesn't know about? No, that's all I do is study pop culture. That's why I'm not a grandmaster. All right. Well, this one um, seems to be. Headed the road of I'm up the exchange and I'm going to win. So uh, my opponent is not quite able to hold on. Let's let's go ahead and back up. And, and as I said, so the King's Gambit is, of course, a, a ton of fun. And, and if you watch Simon Williams' videos, the uh, Ginger GM on Chess.com, seriously, his videos are awesome. I think Simon is like our best video author. I don't know. Feingold's really good. Simon's really good. We have lots of good video authors, but Simon is up there for sure. Um, and he's certainly a proponent of playing the King's Gambit, even at a high level. But, okay, so this, this main way to accept the pawn makes a lot of sense. You can also play the move uh, d5 immediately if you if you like the approach that I'm about to explain. Uh, but after taking in d5, the point is, again, it's, it's a universal strike in the center that just allows, by opening up the diagonals and, and by opening up the, the squares and the files, it allows black to sort of stay on equal footing when it comes to the initiative in the center, which is why you see that move played in so many other openings. Like, what am I talking about? Okay, like, uh, you know, in, in in an Italian game or uh, in a in a Gioco Piano even, where um, when you get these lines with, with C3, and, and d4 very often again like black's best opportunity is to strike with d5 um, let's see what what's what's the main line I would uh, I would think of as far as that goes you know even even in the four nights where um, white opens the center early often black after Bishop b4 is going to be striking with d5 very early so in in most systems where where white is um, opening up the center early, D5 is is the universal thing to do, so so that's kind of what I'm what I'm going to try to do in this game when I play D5, and and this is all fine. Uh, typically, I think even D4 is also fine here, but Bishop to C4 is good. I played C6, uh, just taking the pawn on D5 as well as Bishop to D6 are also both moves. Uh, bishop D6 says, okay, well I'm going to put my bishop on a diagonal that's awkward and blocked by the pawn, but your bishop is in the same scenario. C6 is is one of the most aggressive ways to approach the position. I'm giving up this pawn, uh, definitely taking the risk that if my opponent actually manages to win back my F pawn that I took, then he'll actually be up a pawn, which is rare for White to be up a pawn in a king's gambit, right? So, um, sorry, my my honey badger, as you all remember, honey badger just don't care. My honey badger mug was ruined in the dishwasher. First of all, who put my mug in the dishwasher without talking to me? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, what what do I need to do? Start, you know, showering and brushing my teeth too? Are we worried about hygiene now? <sighs> Come on, right? I'm a chess player. Anyway, no, but seriously. So first of all, someone put my my cup in the dishwasher and it ruined the honey badger mug. I'll give you a close up. It used to be a full honey badger and said just don't care. Now it's like he's, you know. He's, he's been cut off. 
It's peppermint tea, FYI, and delicious. All right, um, so in this position, he should play d4 immediately, no matter what. It, it would stop me from getting the bishop to c5 as I did. Also, immediately opens the door to attack the f-pawn. I would have played bishop to d6, and we would have had a game that happens in this line. You know, uh, pretty pretty standard approach for both sides. So uh, when he doesn't play that, when, when he doesn't play um, d4 is when he first really starts to get in trouble here, Gartholomew. Because once my bishop comes to c5, not only am I preventing castles, but d4 is suddenly not even a real option because it just loses the pawn. And, and that's what led to my immediate threats on the e-file, which he saw and tried to defend. Uh, but then knight to g4 comes, and, and you're already in a position where, I mean, I'm not even sure if knight e3 is the best. Maybe bishop e3 is really good. Maybe some other just natural developing move is good. But this is good enough to see that black is very comfortable, completely dominating the dark squares, and uh, white is white has the opposite of what you normally want in a king's gambit, which is a big checkmate attack. So Gartholomew, where you really went wrong is, one, d5 is a principled way to play, and it's probably the best line. It's the way that I would recommend you know, for most people to get equality against the King's Gambit. Um, maybe not the sharpest, craziest line, but I think it's the most disciplined approach. Again, based on this fact that d5 is a universal move that makes sense whenever we have King's Pawn games, King's Pawn games that open the center early. Um, but again, you were doing fine up until here. Just d4 is a critical move that you didn't play and, and it ended up leading to, uh, to big problems. So, all right, let's take on Holden222. Welcome to the Bullet Brawl Show, Holden. I, um... I don't know if that's supposed to be like two squared or two cubed or something. I don't know what you're trying to say with that username, but I get it. Holden Caulfield, maybe. Maybe you're making a an abstract catcher in the rye reference. There you go. Hashtag more pop culture from this guy. You're like, what is going on right now? What's he doing? What is he talking about? Catcher in the Rye is my favorite book. And he likes it. I like it. I do like Catcher in the Rye. It's a fantastic, fantastic book. Okay, so we have uh, all natural stuff going on here. Natural stuff going on here. Everybody's trying to bring their pieces to their best squares. Um, I should have just taken on C3, but I missed it because I was trying to remember my favorite my favorite part of Catcher in the Rye. Oh, now I'm just blundering, blundering away positions. Well, okay, time to focus. Time to focus and uh, not think too much about... All right, we're going to sack that pawn for the initiative. Can I trade everything? Who's winning in the king of pawn ending? Uh, it's too hard to tell. I can't. I can't make a decision like that so fast. Um, now I'm definitely losing in the king of pawn ending after that. So maybe I can just take the draw, huh? Nah. Let's not take a draw. Let's play a worse position for a win, right? Come on. Because it is bullet chess after all. And that is how dreams are made. Okay, well now we can just start taking everybody. And we'll check and trade, we'll take, and we'll pre-move it out. Pre-move it out. You know what I'm talking about when we pre-move it out? That's how we do it, and that's how we win. Okay, um, let's back this thing up. Uh, so we played a Sicilian Accelerated Dragon, and against this move order, white has to be more careful about black's threat of d5. Wow, d5, it's like a universal thing today in all the games we're playing. At least right now. We've only played two games. Oh, I love that peppermint tea. Um, and so the point is that uh, when black plays the Accelerated move order, he's trying to delay playing d6, which is the natural move, opens up the bishop, guards the center. It's a move you see in almost every Sicilian, right? Uh, in order to try to get d5 in one move. And what white needs to do in order to be ready for that, especially once black is castled, is to retreat this knight from d4 to b3, which opens up the queen to guard d5 and forces a transposition after d6, although a5 is also a move I 
I don't think those lines were as good for black. But uh, after d6, castles, now we would have transposed into a typical classical dragon, you know, where white can play the typical plans like rook e1, back up the bishop, try to put the knight on d5 in some positions, like a Marco hop structure, and, and, and that's that's how you should play it. But uh, by, by getting castled here, if we, if we go through, by getting castled... Um, you allow me to immediately strike with d5. And it's not to say that the game is over at all. All it is is the black has just equalized immediately and taken away any any real space advantage white would have had. Uh, with b2 hanging, you you played c3. b3 would have been met by queen to c3 just the same. Um, and here I just kind of blundered. I should have I should have went and grabbed this pawn. I was I was, like I said, busy, busy in my own world of catcher in the rye and played some really bad moves. This position should just be much worse for me. My opponent got a little bit uh, overly anxious about the potential of an attack on the king side, started trying to force a queen trade, which I don't really think is the best way to use the advantage. I don't see any reason why white shouldn't just go grab this pawn on c6. Uh, a pawn is a pawn, right? The queen guards g2 on that diagonal, and it actually gives you this potentially uh, decisive advantage. So I think queen takes c6 made sense. You played queen e3. I tried to do the attack, which, okay, we go for this queen trade, but again, your chances of sort of picking off these weaknesses go down with the queens coming off the board. And though this rook ending should probably be okay for you if you don't blunder this e3 move, maybe like rook e1, put pressure on the e pawn. Like if you play this and I have to guard it and then you just start doubling that way, this looks like it would have been much more of a problem for me. So yeah, I mean, no defense to the fact that I really, uh, really didn't transition well from the opening into the middle game. Uh, some bad trades, but... But okay, that's life. We got a lot of challenges here. We got a lot of people. You can again follow me on Twitter, which is the best way to know exactly when we're going live. Me personally, not just chess.com. Uh, and uh, we have so many people who look to get challenges accepted by tweeting at me. And, and we got a lot of regulars here. I'm going to take on Mr. Uh, FSUN Nicholas Lewis, who an active tweeter. And actually, uh, he challenged me to a rematch. You know how I feel about a challenge. Can't back away from that thing. So we'll play a dragon. We'll see how he does here. In the dragon. All right, we have another dragon. I'll play d5 immediately. Okay, he's going to play... I'll go for the queen sack line because people... Ooh, he doesn't sack the queen, which is a mistake. Or he's supposed to play e5 there. So now we're in pretty good shape. There's a reason why he's supposed to play e5 there, and it's because... Um, Black is going to get a lot of attacking chances now. Ugh, I wanted to do something even better than just retreat, but I can do it now, I think. Take, and I'm going to take on e4 with a discovery by eliminating the knight. That allows me to go trade here, which threatens checkmate. He's going to have to trade queens, and and that's only going to lead to more shenanigans. Um, not the good kind of shenanigans either. Uh, we'll take here with another discovered check. I don't even want the rook. I don't even want the rook. I guess, okay, fine, I'll take the rook now. I guess I'll take the rook now, or will I? Oh, man, I want more. I want more. I wanted more. Okay, I'll go get more this way. We'll take it, shake and bake it, start making some pre-moves, start making some pre-moves. That's how we roll. Rock that pawn up the board. Go get that queen. Go catch that beautiful butterfly. People always clap for the wrong reasons. That's a Holden Caulfield phrase, right? Courtesy of my lovely assistant here who's helping me, <laughs> reminding me of some of the best phrases. People never notice anything. Well, look at that. We've got, uh, got some studs coming our way early. He wants in. I understand. He wants to take me down in front of the live audience. All right, Bory boy, you will get your wish right now. Here we go. I hope I hope you're uh, ready to ready to party. Right? Oh, we have played this before with you, haven't we? Haven't you and I been here before? I feel like this isn't our first time with this kind of shenanigans. It's not our first time with these shenanigans. Wow. Well, um, 
Okay, I guess we'll let him take. Open things up. The main issue here is is normally the time against title players like this, so have to definitely be careful of the time. Take it, bake it, uh, shake it. We're opening up the uh, opening up the king side in the hopes that we will hmm, get some counterplay with the bishops in the open position that is now occurring. Okay, we'll take, I guess. I don't think we really have any other choice. Time, time, time. Time is not fun here. Hmm. That probably wasn't the best the best idea I've ever had. Probably was not the best idea I've ever had. Oh, well, that wasn't good. I actually got myself back into a pretty good position, didn't I? That was sort of silly of me, I think. Wow, I got myself into a pretty good position on the clock and on the board. Why did I pan? I don't know. I, I guess I, I was down such a significant amount of time earlier, I kind of I kind of panicked. Um... In this position here, I think it was about even, so I should have just moved. And, and likely trading the rooks isn't the best idea either if I want to try to win. But okay, I have to uh, have to play again, right? We always play a best of five with these title players. We don't want to disappoint. We certainly would not want to disappoint. Can I go take it? I don't know. I'm going to do it anyway. Not sure I could get away with that, but I did it. And it didn't work out. Now did it. Nope, it didn't. Got to go grab some pawns, I guess. Would seem to make the most sense. Of all the options would seem to make the most sense. Uh, okay. Oops, I was playing okay. I was playing decently, huh? I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Right now I'm just making a whole bunch of random moves. <laughs> Oops. That's someone calling me. And I can't talk to that person right now. You know what I mean? Mate. Okay. All right. Well, too many distractions going on right now to play a player of this level. So I need to pick up my game. All right. All right, Bory boy. I'll do my best to play a little better this time. Trying to pick up the pace, mainly. I feel like my moves have been relatively decent. But not the uh, not the greatest time management, so got to be careful about that. Mm. 
It was actually not the best move by me to begin with. Neither was that. A lot of wasted time there. A lot of wasted time. Uh-oh. Uh Don't forget about that. That would be a bit of a problem, and it's turning out to be a bit of a problem now. That's not good. Certainly is not good. Oh, that's a piece. That wasn't accurate by me to begin with. Well, I was winning that game. I was winning that game, and I just... I, I, right now, I'm just really struggling to play fast. I don't know what's wrong with me. I was winning that game for many, many moves, and I just uh, fooled around too much before going to get the Rook. Should have just went for this idea earlier. But okay, Bori Bori gets the best of me. First title player in the match. Maybe we'll see him later on in the show. I'm going to take on some of these other members and tweeters tweeting at me. Looking for a chance to get on the show. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, D4. Let's see what he likes. We'll play the Trompowski, my favorito. All right, castles, C4. This is all regular stuff. I'm going to try to go gather up that pawn there. Gather up that pawn. Uh, we'll support the knight on c4 for now. I'm going to try to offer a, a queen trade. I'm up a pawn after all. And so it seems like a good idea to get those queens off the board. Hmm. I guess we'll play there. I guess we'll play there, and then we'll try to bring the uh, the knight around to f6 before opening up files for the rest of our pieces. Oop, that was a fork. I missed it. Well, not the second time. Fool me once, right? <clears throat> okay. Opening up the uh, seventh rank, which seems to make sense right now. Okay, my opponent actually played the correct theory against the Trumpowski if you're going to play the G6 line, which I don't think is the most challenging line for black. I mean, white gets a pretty comfortable little edge here. Um, but okay, taking on C4 if you're not going to win the pawn, it's definitely a trap that white falls for a lot, putting this knight on C3 and then letting you take on C4. Because in those positions, like just to show you, if I play knight C3 and you take, it's actually not that easy for white to regather that pawn. Um, for example, moves like queen a4 can be met by b5, and takes, takes, doesn't work, because after takes, I mean, the queen's under attack, you can't take the rook, and I guess just rook to b8 seems good enough, the, rook, the knight is defending the rook, so, um, so if white makes this type of development mistake, often, and I've, I've done that many times in blitz, often taking c4 is the right idea, but in, in a situation that we had in the game, you know, where my knight's on d2, 
you know, you're just definitely making white's job a little easier. I'm going to gather this pawn. B5 is not an option now because of C6 falling. And, and so here white's just comfortably better uh, with a better center, with the with the knights well-placed and sort of this minority attack type pressure that's going to come on the queen side. And my opponent played knight e4, which is probably what he should have done instead of taking c4, if that's his idea. You know, if you play the knight on e4 when you still have the support here, something like knight f6 and then knight e4, it certainly would make more sense for black and is also a typical way that black will play it. So there you go. Wow, a whole lot of title players flowing in. They saw Bori Boy take me down and they said, hey, it's our turn today. All right, let me play uni as well. Uni's a regular, a regular uh, performer here, right? He likes to uh, he likes to hop on the mic and get his rhymes tight. All right, we're gonna play the same way that Bory Boy did apparently. We're gonna play the same way that Bory Boy did apparently, sort of. Okay, big trades, big trades for a big man. All right, I'm going to play a5 and go after these pawns, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's not that great for me. That is a protected pass pawn. But we'll see if he knows how to use it, right? It's not the size that counts, after all. It is how you use it, or so I've heard. All right. Uh, okay. That also makes sense. That also makes sense. I'm going to play e5, though. I am going to play e5 and go after... Ooh... Hold a tick. He can do that, huh? I don't think so. I don't really think so. First thing I'm going to do is play e4. Ah, uh, he goes for this. But I'll, I'll take first and then take here with the threat of queening before I gobble up that pawn. Ah, oh, I didn't see that. Oh, well, now I probably just blundered away the game, huh? Uh-oh. Uh, all right, resigns town. Okay, wow, that was that was bad. That, talk about good positions gone wrong, huh? I should have just taken and then gone after my getting my pawn back this way. Yeah, okay. All right, well, bad chess for me. Lots of blunders today. We'll see if Uni wants more. Does he want more? I'm sure he does. They always want a best of five. They always come back, right? My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. My commentary brings all the players to the yard because they're like, I want to beat him while he's live and embarrass him every time. That's what they do. They love coming and embarrassing me. All right, but it's my fault. I do it to myself. All right. Uh, yeah, why not? Um, I'm not exactly sure if I even like my position at all here, to be honest. I'm not exactly sure what's going on on any level right now. But I am gonna, I'm gonna try to open the e-file. That's why I put that rook there. Okay, I guess he doesn't care. Got it, he says he doesn't care. I get it, we get it. What is wrong with me? That was such an obvious threat. That was such an obvious threat, and I wasn't even looking for it, to be honest. My position is actually still okay, even after that horrific blunder, which is kind of amazing. Go after his rook. Oop, shakes. All right. Well, a little bit sloppy by both of us in the end. It was a little bit of a pre time scramble, scramble. But the best of five is brought back to 1-1. Remember, the point of this is to have fun, not to win. 
says every T-ball coach as they remain frustrated about their own past because they got cut by the high school baseball team. Did I just say that out loud? Yeah, I did. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's go for the baloney. He's going to want to play E4 here anyway. That's what they say about playing E3. As soon as you do, you want to play E4. Here it comes. He's going to play it. He's going to play E4. First, he's got to stop Bishop G4, which is something I should have played a couple moves ago. Unfortunately, I did not. But now we're happy because the time he had to take to deal with that, hold a tick. There's no way for me to just punish that knight. It's an undefended knight there. We'll go for this. Go get the dark squared bishop that way because we gain the tempo on the knight. We will go get the dark squared bishop the old fashioned way. See if we can keep bringing pressure to that pinned pony. There's a pinned pony on c3, right? Is that a pinned pony right there? I think it is. Ooh, I thought I had something even better than uh, knight a. I, had, I thought I had knight a6 for a minute, but I didn't. Wait, now I can take. He has to take with the rook. Oh, but he forgot why. He had to take with the rook, but he forgot why he had to do that. So first thing I'm going to do is guard my knight before going after his pieces. Uh, yeah, we'll keep going with that. We're bringing everybody in for the noise. The noise and the funk has been brought in. We're hopefully going to take this best of five and then look to bring on more people onto the show. We don't want anyone sitting out in the cold tonight. Uni and I have played a few of these scotches. I enjoy scotch with a nice cigar. All right, Queen E2 is coming next to guard the E pawn. Yeah, I played this line against somebody yesterday who really knew the theory. And uh, I can only assume that's because he had done his homework. But then he made some blunders later on. But this line is, a, this approach is obviously just good for white. I have two pieces for the rook. And, and with it, dominating space in addition to that. So uh, should I just take it? Probably. We're not really worried about him trading queens. So we're going to develop and bring the rook to f1 next. As soon as we get a chance. That rook is going to come to f1. Uh, but I want to checkmate him. I want to checkmate him. So let me go here and see how he wants to deal with h7 first. Let's see how he wants to deal with h7 first thing. Okay, that's how he's going to deal with it. Now I'll back up. So maybe I can go take on h6. The pawn is pinned after all. And then bring the rook to f1. Okay, fine. Queen trade, queen trade. He could have taken on c2. Would have been definitely much better for him. Alright. Uh, wait, did I just trap my knight? I think I just trapped my knight. That wasn't good. Oop, but he didn't see it, or he did, and he just found a better way to go about it. <laughs> I'm losing a lot of time right now. I have to be very, very careful with this. What am I doing? Uh, what am I doing right now? I'm being silly is what I'm doing. Wow, he just gave me everything. <laughs> he just free moved away everything, so I didn't I didn't get the draw I didn't get the loss. Okay, but I was you know, I deserved to win that game three times over, so I don't know how I I was uh that was painful. But I'm sure it was more painful for my opponent. Ah oh, mouse slip, meant to play B five. Uh oh, that's not gonna be good. Now we're going to be in a very bad Benoni. That's the truth. We are going to be in a very bad Benoni for me. Mm, 
Not great for me. We could trade the dark square bishops. That's okay with me. If he wants it, I'll do it. But okay, I'm not going to take a draw. No way, Jose. No way. Now I'll go expand on the queen side. Lots of good pawns advancing for me now. Hmm. We want to go get that d5 pawn. It's just not exactly clear how to do it. So if he plays knight there, I think I... Okay, I thought it was going to have... Um, and I probably would have messed up the like knight to... Or pawn to c3. Um, we'll try not to just completely blunder away this one. That's what we'll try to do. We did it, and we took the best of five along with it. A lot more title players coming along. I know there's a lot of people waiting, though, so I feel like I can't just keep taking on the title players who want to jump in on this. Got to take on some tweeters, too. Follow me, at Daniel Wrench. Subscribe to us right now on Twitch if you haven't already. And if you're just joining us, welcome to the party. You know what I mean? Um... This is a bullet brawl. I'm playing bullet chess against a whole bunch of different people, and it's a lot of fun. And we provide commentary, and then we, um, and that's it. That that's a, that's all we do actually. Try to make it sound like there was something at the end of it, you know, like a like a goodie bag for everybody. Whatever happened to that age? Like, you know what I wouldn't give for a goodie bag? Although I guess they still do goodie bags, right? For like teachers, teachers who go to conferences, you get like a little bag of little, like you know, now you get like a little USB drive and a pen, right? That kind of thing. That's what I'm saying. It's like you know, when you were kids, you got a goodie bag because they all knew like you didn't really have to come to their birthday, so they wanted to leave you with a good taste in your mouth. I appreciate that. Miss those days. All right, this is just um. A lot of extra material up a rook and then some. My opponent made a typical mistake that a lot of uh, lower rated players make in the open Sicilian, so I will go ahead and back up and just highlight that for the majority of our audience who it might be useful for. Okay, let's give some checks. Attack a knight. Maybe even play f5. Uh, doesn't really matter at this point. We will use our pawns for the good of humanity. Oop. Okay, we'll see if he wants to take it. Maybe get mated. That was fun to pre-move that whole thing out. Always fun to find as many pre-moves as you can in a row. Okay, so my opponent played a typical open Sicilian, but there were two mistakes made here that are common development slash moves that seem okay but actually do a lot for your opponent uh the first one is putting the bishop on d3 there are, there are very few open sicilians where this this development of the bishop makes more sense than either putting it on c4 or e2 a couple reasons one on d3, it doesn't actually do as much good as you think. I mean, you're at, you're really serving the purpose of a big pawn in many ways, and you're blocking the queen from protecting the knight. So you're not really improving your overall position here. Um, 
by, by blocking the, the queen's control over the center and putting the bishop on d3. Uh, now, there are some exceptions to that. There are some lines in the con and in the Paulson type of open Sicilians, and of course, nothing nothing anyone ever says should be taken dogmatically. If you're doing that, that's a you problem. I'm just providing context to the fact that the bishop on d3 is an easy move to play. Like, let me just develop and then I'll figure it out. How many times have people said that, especially at the amateur level where you're now at the point where you know you need to use all your pieces, you're getting developed, but you don't really know opening theory that well yet? Very often, people just develop their pieces and say, I'll figure out the plan later, right? Um, which is not good. And so so the bishop on e2 stays out of the way of the queen. Also, if you need to remove the knight, it, that, that makes the queen have even more control of the center. And the bishop on e2 has the potential to go to f3, which is very useful in a lot of different lines after you've advanced the f-pawn. On c4, the bishop is placed on pretty much the best diagonal ever. I don't really need to explain why the bishop on c4 makes more sense. I'm not even condoning the move bishop to c4 as the best move here for white. It's actually an, ac an inaccurate move in this exact position, but I'm not going to get into advanced theory. This is just sort of basic Sicilian understanding of stuff. So the bishop on c4 makes sense in a lot of Yugoslav attacks. It makes sense in a lot of, uh, you know, like a Sozin Nidorf. It it's a very well-developed bishop in a lot of situations. Um, again, or on e2, where you get castled, or believe it or not, probably a third best square, better than d3 more often. Take a guess at what it is. I'll pause for a second, even though I know there's a lag, and let people who want to guess, guess. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten caught up to the live. The move that, the square that's probably better is actually right where it is. Because if you're developing into the into the variations where you're going to go for, for a queen side attack, often the development of this bishop is a waste of time and doesn't do anything to improve your overall position, which should be based on like g4, h4, h5, and this sort of English attack slash Yugoslav attacking structure. So if you're playing a Yugoslav attacking structure, the development of the bishop to d3 doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're playing against most lines of the knight or if the bishop doesn't go there to d3, if you're playing against most lines of the dragon. So... So this is just a move that is very often the sign of someone who just doesn't quite understand the nature of these positions and where they're headed and puts the bishop on d3 just for developing, for development's sake, again. Um, so then the next mistake he makes is, is when he takes on c6, which can also be very useful for a lot of amateurs because almost never is this the right decision. It brings another pawn to the center. You know that rule that you learned from Nimzovich, never take a piece if it brings, if it strengthens your opponent's control over the center. You bring another pawn to the center, where I now control these three squares that are critical. The B file ends up being just as useful as the C file would have been. And, and there's really no reason to take here. You know, um, there's not really any concrete threats. So, so again, these were just two typical moves or mistakes that are made by amateurs out of the opening that I wanted to highlight because I've been given feedback like, hey, we like it when you analyze these games, so we feel like we're learning something while you're just messing around with your bullet games. So I'm trying to do that before we just jump into more title player battles as well. So hopefully that was useful. Uh, let's take on another another uh, newcomer to the Bullet Brawl show. Welcome, Mr. Mad Christensen. Mad, Mads. Mads Christensen. Uh, you... Uh, Norwegian? That sounds like a Norwegian name, name, maybe a Danish name, maybe Danish, maybe Denmark, um, maybe Scandinavian. I'm just trying to guess. I actually don't know that flag. I know I should know my, my uh, flags by now, but let's be honest. How many flags do you know? Okay, before you judge me, take a look at yourself. Hashtag Eric Clapton. Boom. Before you accuse me, take a look at yourself, right? Before you accuse me, take a look at yourself. Man, whatever happened to great blues musicians, like with lyrics? I'm not just talking like the, you know, the acoustics of blues, you know, the... I'm talking about people like Eric Clapton, right? You know what I'm talking about? Layla, ba -da down, 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 got me on my knees, Layla. Begging, darling, please, Layla. Down, 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 down. Darling, won't you ease my worried mind? I'm just crashing here. I'm crashing it. I'm crashing it like Hans and Franz. We will pump you up. All right, let's do it. I'm going to take on another title player, one I've never played before. ASMS 9699. Before you accuse me. Take a look at yourself Before you accuse me Take a look at yourself 
I'm spending my money on other women. You take money from someone else. That's just me. That's just me getting in touch with Eric. EC. Eric Clapton, my boy. Back in the day, Eric Clapton was my favorite musician. Not back in the day. I mean, he still is in many ways. Ooh, I like to take it. I like to take F6, right? And do it nice. I'm going to play G5 and pry open this H file. Thing's going to get kind of nasty there, right? Before you accuse me, take a look at yourself. Here we go. Let's pry open that file. Take a look at that file. I would love to just sack my queen and then go and win. But I can't just do that to someone else. Should have been a little more careful. After getting a pretty nice position, I got a little careless. Whoa! That was hashtag unnecessary sackage. Flag, 15-yard penalty, unnecessary sackage. All right, let's play again. ASMS 9699, welcome to the party. I don't believe we've ever had the pleasure of battling in the bullet brawl. I do not believe we have ever had the pleasure. Before you accuse me, take a look at yourself. Whoa. Yeah, we'll go there. Put the knight on c4 and see if we can make something of it. Right? Okay. I guess we should go this way. See if we can't have a little bit of an edge in this end game. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know, actually. Huh. I don't know. Maybe I don't have any edge. Not anymore. I don't have an edge at all anymore. Uh-oh. Wow. I really, really messed that up. That was not fun. The way I played that. It was not fun what I just did there. For me, anyway. He's probably enjoying it. Uh, can I do this? I guess I can. Barely. Oh, no, I can't. Duh. Did it. Held the draw. Held the draw on a lost position. My favorite thing to do. Alright, we have a classical. Classical French. Not my first classical French, I could say that. Not my first rodeo in that sense. Whoa. Hold a tick. Am I supposed to be worried about this? I don't even remember what I'm supposed to be worried about anymore. I don't even remember anymore. Lassie, what is it, girl? What are you worried about? Okay, but I like this. I don't think that was... That was not the Sam Adams for him. This is going to be a good night versus a bad bishop kind of game and we're good with that uh 
Whoa, how is he not just like... Ugh, oh, what am I doing? It's blowing it right now. Oh, what was that? Oh, that was silly of me. Why did I just do that? Somehow still managed to draw. Wow, I, I've blown a couple of good positions, but um, he's also probably got to be pretty frustrated at this point. Given the way that that's gone. Hmm, okay, I should have just played knight to c4 last move. Darn it. But I didn't, although I will make up for that now. All right, fine. Fine, fine, I will take the exchange. Hmm, he's got some compensation here, huh? A little bit irritating, if I don't say so myself. A little bit irritating, his compensation is. Okay, but now maybe I can get rid of the rooks, which should help matters. Can I force a queen straight? I think so. Ugh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh my gosh, my rook was hanging that whole time, and he didn't see it either. Wow. Bad chess by both of us. That's the truth. Bad chess by both of us, but even worse by him. I feel bad for this guy. He's losing the best of five, and he really didn't deserve to. <laughs> I mean, I, I just I played terribly these last few games. Oh, he moved. I have to be a little careful. He's not just resigning yet. I thought he was just going to resign, honestly. Wow. Well, I mean, I, I, if, I, if I could feel bad, if I was capable of feeling that, uh, that form of empathy, I would. Let's take on Samsh. Samwise Gamgee, as I like to call him. And we're going to be bringing this bullet brawl to a close here pretty soon after that performance. The bad news is I have to tell everybody I will not be here next week. So next week's bullet brawl will be a pre-recorded version, something I will get to in the next few days. Um, so do not uh, do not look for a live show next week. I will be out of town traveling. That is what's going to be happening. So um, anyway. That's just an early FYI to the schedule. This is going to be fun. Just go for it. Just go all out for the mating attack. Don't even don't even hold back, right? Right? Tom Petty on this. We're going to stand our ground, and we won't back down. I won't back. Hey, baby. There ain't no easy way out. I won't back. Hey, now. I'm gonna stand my ground. And I won't back down. I won't back. Hey, baby. There ain't no easy way out. I won't back. Hey, now. I'm gonna stand. How does he do that voice? My ground. I think it's because it's actually how he talks. And I won't back down. No suit for you. No counterplay. Not today. Not ever. Ooh, that's a check. 
that's a knight, and that's going to be a mate town. All right, that was fun. Well, I felt pretty good about this bullet brawl today. I know um, there's a lot more people also waiting. Uh, I just I can't even list all your names. So many, so many good players, not enough time. I'd love to sit here and take on the title players too. Chiron, Chiron Griffith, Fide Master, uh, Commandorus, 123, 2450 Fide Master. Um, but I just, you know, at some point we have to call it. Sometimes we have to call it. Um, Samsh wants one more. He wasn't ready. All right, fine, Samsh. Fine, Samwise Gamgee, we wouldn't want you going all Lord of the Rings on this and carrying the ring for Frodo, would we? All right, don't be a martyr. Um, so we'll uh, we'll give you we'll give you that chance that you need. Give you that chance that we that you need. Hey, baby, there ain't no easy way out. I won't be gonna stand my ground oops i just blundered away i blundered away the exchange oh no i didn't i have a move that saves me would make sense that there was a move that would save me there uh all right we'll let you trade if you want it he wants it Ooh, but you're just gonna give me the open file that was not a wise decision. I've lost a lot of rook endings like this, where I thought I would have good chances, but control over those critical open files leads to badness, Sam. Let this be a lesson for you and all youngins. Do not underestimate the power of the open file. Um... Huh. I'll be a little careful. I will be a little bit careful here. Ooh, wait a second. You can't just trade. You're lost in the king and pawn ending, dog. We're just going to work our queen closer. Uh, we'll work our queen a little bit closer, right, till we get into that position where we can gobble up that guy, and then we'll go gobble up that guy, and then we'll pre-move it out. All right, good game, Sam, good game. Well, everybody says I should play at least one more game, right, should make this at least an hour. Let's play one more title player battle. We'll see if Commodorus123 has what it takes to smash me on live TV. I get the feeling he's like uh like he's just straight out of, you know, straight out of like the chess, the chess, you know, I don't know, hood or something. Like that name just sounds intimidating, Commandorus. It's like, yo, don't order the missile strike against me, dude. You know what I'm saying? Don't order the nuke strike. Uh, this feels like I should be getting a lot of good stuff here. So I'll take there. Make him take back with the pawn. And now I have pretty good control over the C file, if I don't say so myself. Oops, or I did, until that blunder. Ugh. What's going on? What are you doing to me, Commandorus? I don't like what you're doing right now. Ugh, just bad chess here. I was doing so good. Ugh. Oh. That was a mistake. All right, well, Commodorus came to play. After his bad opening, he took me down. So let's see how let's see what he plays against the regular the regular old E4 stuff. Never played Commodorus. Have a lot of new players on the show today. Aha, this stuff. I don't even remember what I'm supposed to do against this stuff. 
but I do remember that it's irritating to play against. That is what I remember. Uh, I guess so. Not playing fast enough. That's the first issue. I can just feel that I'm not playing fast enough. Oh, there's a mouse slip. Uh, no, and then I could have taken his rook after my mouse slip. Well, I played well. I played well there until the uh, until the mouse slips and the time. I mean, given I was down on time, but he's fast. Commodorus123 is a fast little kitten, that's for sure. Ooh. was weird. That whole experience was just weird. A lot of pawns. Nice to get a win. Nice to get a win and not just go down without a fight. You know what I'm talking about? You guys know what I'm talking about. We are now officially over an hour. We are now officially over an hour, so the Bullet Brawl will be coming to a close as soon as this one is done. Oops. Not good.
can't say I quite know what I'm doing here. Because that would be lying to all of you. Alright. Well, we're going to tip our hat to Commodorus. Didn't play well last few games. Well, that's what happens. And just like that, you drop 20 rating points. That's the story. That's the story she wrote. Um, she also wrote another tale about you following me on Twitter and uh, subscribing to us on Twitch and about being a good person, right? That's what she said. She said that. Remember, don't, uh, don't ever forget there are real people in this world, not just you. You ever notice how we get irritated and frustrated with things just based on the assumption that the universe revolves around us? Right? Like, things taking too long and these sort of things. You know, good thing to think about. I try to work on that myself. All right, everybody. Good talk. Later.